Well, this happened while I was in the middle of mowing. I got most of everything except a little spot underneath that tree. Right, I mean literally where my finger is showing. One little strip because the water hose was stretched out toward the garden. So I got off, rolled it up. And then when I got back on the mower and made one circle, look, now it's gonna stop. I, Levi's in the pool. This is just like one of those little summer, middle of the day showers, but it looks like it's water. It is hard. I thought it don't matter. I've mowed in the rain before, no big deal. But then the drops are becoming bigger and bigger and literally like, it wasn't a little misty rain. It was pour down on you rain. It's stopping now, look. But thing is, I don't like I don't like mowing wet grass. So therefore, I'm sort of I'm sort of at a standstill here. Cause I plan on going out the back gate, mowing around the feed room. I mowed out this side of this, the gate over here. I mowed up the lane and around and around those that cluster of pine trees behind the chicken house. But then I come back in and come in the yard because by then the goats were moving up. And um, I've already had to chase for it. When I come through with the lawnmower, I made a, I come through the gate here in the yard. I mowed all that. I opened that up. Back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up, back up. I opened the gate so Molly could go out. Then I come through with the mower. And it did, it scared her. So she went on out like toward the pond like she does. I mowed all around the, that cluster of trees and I come back in and I finished mowing the little lane where she hangs out during the day if I don't have the gates open. Then I got off the mower, opened the gate to the yard right here at the side and came in. I come in and made one little, I came up the fence toward Molly, the gate that goes into Molly's stall turned and as i come around the the, tr the trampoline and got right here as i made a circle around i looked up and bilbo is over there eating off that pulling limbs down off that tree behind the pool and frodo's making his way up this fence line so i tur uh, turned off the mower part because i don't like to chase them with the mower on and i come around the pool really fast and they both shoo, shot out that gate and and then I used the mower. I just went up against the mower and pushed it closed. Okay, so now they would think that it's closed. I mean, it, it was closed. But they would think it's locked, right? Mm. I start going off down through there and around the garden and stuff. Look up. And here comes Frodo back in the yard. He's done pushed the gate open. And he's coming back in. He's so smart. Frodo, because he was a house goat. I'm joking. I'm just joking. I'm making a joke. I started to say because he's a house goat, he's so smart. Because I always say dogs that live in the house, you're talking to them constantly. Get off the couch, get on, come eat, come do this, come let's go to bed, go to sleep. You know, you're constantly talking to your dog, especially the ones that live in the house. They become smarter. That's why I get surprised with her over there because she lived for six months in the house. And did all the things. Look at him. I'm going to lick the water off my leg. Did all the things that these dogs do, and as smart as they are, you would think she's that way, but she's just got a little, 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 just a lollygag type of attitude. Anyway, the rain is slow, slow. I believe I never got out of the pool. Look at his little head pop up. Hey, is it still raining? <laughs> he said, yeah. Did you get wet from the rain? Well, you're already wet from the pool. Did it bother you when it rained? Well, why didn't you get out? No. Well, I don't care if you get out now. The sun's not even out. You can get out. Anyway. Your your towel is wet because it was on that chair. You'll have to use my towel over here. There's his shirt when he went out to the pool. He threw his shirt right there. It's soaking wet. Chickens are having a field day because I opened that gate back there's, there were several little ones out and the lawnmower was scaring them. So they're just sort of like doing their own thing. That poor, I think Buddy and Steph named that, that chicken. You know, we're not really chicken namers. I call Big Red, Big Red. But there ain't none of my other chickens named. 
but I think they said they're going to call her Lottie, or they're calling her Lottie. Anyway, she is running up and down that little fence line over there. So they came and got her the other night, and I think they put her in the little brooder house, the little white house that they use as like a first stage when the chicks are born, when the chicks are hatched, not born, when the chicks hatch, they, they're going to use that little house as a brooder because it's easy to put a light in there. It contains the heat. And, um, and, um, and then from there, they'll move them over to their chicken coop when they get older. So anyway, they put her in that little brooder house and she's just running. Go, she's going up and down. I feel sorry for her because she's never been, can y'all see her? I don't know. I can't get my, that's as big as my camera will go zoomed in, but she is just going back and forth. Here she, she's going to the house. Now she's going to come back. She's going, there she comes. Well, she keeps going back and forth to that one spot. There she goes. Anyway, she wants out so bad. But that first time when they took her, they left her in the little brooder, I think for a couple of days. Then she put her in with the chickens and at the end of her actual closed in, completely closed in run, Steph has that little yard, like just a little fence. I don't know if it's in a circle or it's a square. I really haven't walked out there and looked at it, but she opened so they all could go out there and eat some. And that's when she realized she was free to fly or jump. And she did, and she came right back over here. But you can see when she's not here, there's been no chickens over here. All that's clean still from yesterday when I when I uh, when I sprayed uh, blue with the blue the blower, none of these jump the fence and go over there and do that. She was the only one that did it. I don't know why, and I don't know why it bothered me so bad, but it did. I didn't want to have to clean up that mulch constantly, and I didn't like when she perched up there and was pooping down that pole. Anyway, I I feel bad because she wants to be more open than that. So as soon I told Steph, if she's just miserable over there, as soon as this all gets enclosed and she wants to come back and you want to bring her back to a bigger spot, she'll have it and it'll be enclosed, it'll be netted over, and she won't be able. She'll have more room to roam, but she won't be able to fly out. Now, when I open the gate back, that's another, that's a whole nother rodeo. When I open the gate back to let them free range in the yard some, but... At this moment, none of them are trying, none, none of them, even my, oh, big red right there, they don't try, they're not trying to leave the yard. They're content, and she's not content just to be in the yard. That's why she kept flying out, even after I had her. Um, I, I seen that, uh, I believe it was Kevin that said something like, how long was she at Kim's? But she's been here a long time. She was just, uh let to be when they were all roosting on the fence line she was one of them that roosted there she didn't roost with the cluster she sort of was down at the end but she roosted there with them and then when she got down she was free to roam she just went everywhere everywhere that they went plus more for the most part she ended up in the front yard because when she was still at buddy and staff's living as one single little chicken and they started feeling sorry for her when she'd come out of her little house that was up there in the front she would just end up in my front yard doing all all this free ranging, but she'd do it around the front. She never really come back to the back. Then when they said, can she live with your chickens? We called her and we put her in with the chickens. Well, y'all remember when she was laying on eggs, she was laying on a clutch of eggs in my shop. And it was after that, that um, it was like, I was trying to keep her back here, but see, it was, um, we were having something outside. It wasn't, I can't remember what it was. We were going to do it. It was a Sunday dinner and it was, maybe it was just a regular old Sunday dinner, but it was cool out. And so we were going to, and it was my turn to cook. So I was going to do it outside. I had the umbrellas up. Everything looked really, you know, it would have looked, it was going to look very pretty out here. I always think it does. I'm very proud of it. My, I'm back, proud of my back deck when I keep it cleaned up. And I'm very proud of how it looks when I set up for a Sunday dinner out here or, or some kind of a party or, or whatever, birthday party or something. Because I put the tablecloths on, I put the umbrellas up, and it all looks pretty. But I got to thinking, 
I had all those metal um, uh, metal sunflowers that I was gifted a long time ago, almost a year ago. There, there's, there's the one of them, and then there's one right at the end of the steps, and there's a couple down the side of the house. I thought, I would like to fill this hole in with mulch. It's where there's no bricks. And then put one of them sunflowers there, and that would just be decorative and still look nice instead of it was dirt with a some scattered little rocks and it was just nasty and the cats were tending to you know poop there and cats don't mess with the mulch they don't poop in the mulch either um it just stays neat and nice until she found the mulch and started digging in it and she it was an everyday thing of me getting the blower and blowing it back in there and getting the blower and blowing it back in or getting the broom and sweeping it back in so now she's over there and i feel sorry for her because she's run up and down the fence line wanting out because she wants free but um i just want her to be if she's over here i just want her to be a team player that's what i told steph she's not a team player all these guys act like chickens and stay together and they do their own thing but together you know what i mean she won't anyway i can't mow now that the rain has come so i guess i'm not gonna do anything for, for it's gonna get you know what when the sun comes back out like when it really comes back out do you know how humid it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be miserable and i've got suntan oil all over me so literally i'm slick like a the what do they call it? A, what do they call it when they're chasing them pigs and slip oil down pigs? <laughs> anyway. Oh. Okay, off the deck. Go, Mama. Off the deck. Go, Mama. Off the deck. Off the deck, Mama. Go. Off the deck. Whew. Anyway, there's nothing I can do now. I can't mow. I hate even that sitting, I, sitting in the... But all the gates were closed to keep the goats out and in. And um, now, I, and I haven't bought a new battery for it yet, so I have to jump it off. But I have to do this thing where I jump it. Let me show y'all. I need to run grab a battery. I just need to go get a battery at Walmart and be done with it. And I haven't done it yet because it seems like things keep popping up. But I use this little wire right here and I touch these two ends. I keep it bent like this. I have to open it up some because the screw the screws are a little bit further further out. About like that. And I have to turn the key and to I'm like trying to start start it at the same time I take both these ends of this wire and hit the two screws down there to the solenoid and that cranks it up it's sort of like bypassing the battery in a way i guess that's what it is i don't really know but daniel taught me how to do it until i get a until i because i told him one day i cut that back i said i cut back a piece of wire show me how to do it so he showed me and then it made me nervous so then one day i had buddy do it but buddy had never done it before so every time it almost cranked he'd jump back and so I'm thinking, okay, he finally got it started and I mowed. And he goes, Mom, just go get your battery. And I said, I know I need to get a battery. I just, you know, I just got other things I have to do right now. So if this starts it, this will be, anyway, I did it myself today. And I got all this mowed. I would need to get this deck out of here. I don't want this deck in here. I want to mow that because I don't weed eat. I need to weed eat or I need to spray one or the other. And I need to hire weed eaters because people that come weed eat. Because I have a weed eater and I can't never get it started either. And it's basically sort of new, but it's sort of difficult to start, I find. Anyway, I'm going to get in. I just thought I was going to get y'all a good video this afternoon for tomorrow of the yard looking so pretty. And, and now it's wet and I don't like to walk in the wet and my feet are already slipping in my Crocs. So I guess I'm just going to go in and y'all going to get this little silly video. Molly, when it first started raining, her stall's right there wide open for her. She ran out that gate and around and then was looking at me back here. And I'm like, you 
ran completely. You were just stuck because she was there. She, she ran off when I started mowing the lane, but when I come into the yard, she worked her way back in here. And I look at her looking at me. Um. So she was like literally right there when the rain started. And instead of running right there and going in there, she ran out the gate in that way. It's so funny. Taco Bell makes that chicken, um, uh, chicken, uh, oh my gosh, quesadilla. I would get, me and mom would get one chicken quesadilla and something to drink and we would share it because when it comes, it's like, it's like half of a tortilla, like the big ones, but it's half. And then it's got those four slices in it where you just pull a triangle, you know, they're shaped like a triangle. So I did that one day, got me one, but I got Levi his, uh, I don't remember what number it is, but it comes with like two soft tacos and a drink and, uh, or maybe three soft tacos and a drink. Anyway, I feel greasy. I, I'm not greasy, but because I had put suntan oil on me and I keep feeling it. Anyway, um, so I said when I when I got mine, when I got it in the car, we were going somewhere. I said we're gonna have to eat as we drive, and unless you want to just hold it, and I said I'm gonna have to try to reheat yours up, but I'm gonna eat mine now. I'm starving. That's what I told him. So anyway. He was going to wait till we got home. So we had a couple of stops to make um, that. I don't remember what day this was. This has been a while. I'm just saying it's been a long time uh, since I made him take a bite of this chicken quesadilla because it was too good for him to do that weird. He does a weird mouth. I, I, I can't even do it. He does something weird with his lips when he doesn't want to taste something or think something's going to taste bad. And um, I said, "You're." I said, "Just take a bite, take a bite." And then I had to threaten him, and I said, "I will not give you those tacos if you didn't at least take a bite. You cannot say you don't like it until you try it." So he took a bite. He took a little bite, but he got enough of the chicken and the cheese in his mouth. So when he gave it back to me, that little triangle. When he gave it back to me, I took a bite of it, and he's still over there, sort of doing something. And I said. So did you like it or not? He goes, I liked it. And I said, did you really like it or did you say and you liked it? And he, anyway, I keep eating because I don't really know if he liked it or not. So I'm eating the rest of it. And I'm, I'm down to one triangle. Now you have to remember it comes in fours. It comes in little four triangles. I'm down to that last triangle. Um, and I didn't eat them just straight away because I think we stopped at UPS. I think I dropped off some stuff at UPS. I, I, don't, I can't remember what all we done. But anyway, I mean, I was like, plus it was hot. So I was just like ate a piece. I was hungry. But then I sat, let it sit for a minute in the little thing right there beside my, you know, by the cup holder. And anyway, at some point I'm down to that last triangle and I take a bite. Now the corner of my eye, he's looking at me. And I said, what, you want this? piece and he said I'll take the rest and he ate that whole last little corner something and he does like them so now when we go through Taco Bell he's perfectly happy getting a my phone says nicely done I've got steps in um he's perfectly happy having a case chicken quesadilla so I got to thinking I can make them at home I have a quesadilla maker I've never really used it that often but I have one so I made these quesadillas one day and I love the way I make them. I love that they taste maybe not identical, but pretty dad gum good compared to the Taco Bell one. I have no idea what all they put in Taco Bell. I didn't, I, I, I don't know what there's in them, but this is what I did to make this flavor. Anyway, I'm gonna make some squash too because I have so much squash. I have. Well, one or two pieces over here behind me that, that is full of, where's my finger at? I can't see where, there. Full of squash. Anyway, so I'm gonna make me some squash in a little bit, but I'm gonna make these quesadillas and I'm gonna show y'all how I do it. So give me one second. All right, so this is what I do. This is the easiest 
the easiest this queso it's the the sort of the white it's not the yellow taco blend cheese or they make a fiesta blend and this is the chicken that i use it's the grilled and ready fajita chicken breast strips and i just pour it in here just like that that's all i'm gonna use right there and i've got my oven almost on high it's not all the way on high but almost and i'm going to let me put these up I'm gonna put this on top. Like this. I have never thought about doing a video of it until today when me and Bree were out shopping and we got, all three of us got a chicken quesadilla and I was telling her how I do it myself. And she was asking me how did I, what did I do to make it? So there's this, okay? Now, this. Now, you know, McCormick was always the original one that made all these sauces, but this is just great value. And it's not even half. Look how much is in there. I mean, this bag was open the last time too that I made it. I don't use a lot. Maybe a third of the bag. Can y'all see how much I sprinkled in there? There's still, I'm gonna do a little bit more. I think I still have, yeah, now I've got, yeah. So this is like, this bag may, will make three times this amount. Now, if I was making more or, or a bigger batch for more people or whatever. He's in a bad mood. Then why are you in there talking hateful? You want to throw your food out? Yes. Well, then I won't feed it to you. Yes. I'll save it for myself or maybe call somebody over that wants to eat it, like Buddy or Staff or Bree, and then you just won't get any. Get any. Not if you're going to throw it out. I'm not. So I'm just going to stir this, this taco seasoning into this queso. And it's gonna warm up, and then I'm fixing to turn it down because I need this chicken to. You know, this chicken was frozen, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna turn it down, so I'm gonna put it on low. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this cheese in it, but for the most part, I I put most of the cheese. In each queso, each queso, each quesadilla that I make. Like when I get ready to actually make them in the quesadilla maker, that's when I sprinkle the cheese on this whole mixture. And then I put the other, the, the top um, tortilla on, then I close it. And the only thing I told Brie, I'm going to use a little bit of water in this cheese and I need my little spatula. I have a little with a red, with a red, there it is. Couldn't find it. So I can stir around this water. Get all that cheesy goodness out of that bottle. So this is just shortcuts. This whole little meal is like a shortcut, but to a good tasty. And I made a one, I made some the other night. Elora was here, it was the night Elora spent the night. And um, she had 
Now, I'm not making them like Taco Bell where it's like a, you're basically, maybe that's a tortilla folded over. That may be how they make theirs. Uh, mine are the way I, you know, just the, it's one big flat tortilla. maker out now um i don't know where i would have put it oh there it is okay so i'm just gonna let this simmer with the lid on it it's on low right here i've got it on low i'm just gonna let it sit there for about i don't know three or four more minutes let that chicken thaw out and then i'll show y'all how it looks in the how I do the actual quesadilla. Okay, this quesadilla maker says Fiesta. Elite Gourmet is who makes it. It has a red and green light and it's not an on and off. You just plug it in and the lights come on and it's red until it's green. And when it's green, it's ready to make a quesadilla. Okay, green lights lit up. I got my squash boiling over here while I was waiting for that to heat. I'm going to put my flour tortilla on. And each one of these triangles is where I'm trying to put the chicken and the cheesy stuff in an actual triangle. And it won't be perfect. Oh, y'all can't see it. You're too close. Let me, let me back you up. There. So it's not beautiful. It's not beautiful. But there it is. A little bit of chicken and cheese in each one of the triangles. Because you can see the triangles are in the form. And then I sprinkle a little bit more of this you can get the taco blend, or there's also one called Fiesta blend. I'll just sprinkle a little bit more cheese on it. Put your top tortilla and close it. Push down and it latches. There's a little latch in the front right here. It latches down. Um, four to five minutes is how long it usually takes to get one ready. guys and I'll show you how it looks in just one second well in four minutes okay mm. I don't know where my kitchen I I've got some little kitchen a chick uh, kitchen scissors I don't even know where they're at so I'm having to use these They still cut right through it. Make these little chi triangles and they're full of that cheesy chicken in there. I let this one cool for a couple of minutes while the other one's cooking and while my squash is cooking. But Levi I can start on this one if he wants. Your shirt's on backwards. You wanna start on these? Yes. Um, hey. You take a bite? Yeah. Take a bite. Let the camera see if you like them or not. I like them. You like it? Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That's an easy chicken quesadilla. Okay. That's an 
that's a wrap. Um, that's what I did on this rainy afternoon when it rained me out of mowing. I came in, did a little stuff in the house, and then I made chicken quesadillas. And he loves them, and that's a plus because it's hard, hard to get to find things that he likes. Um, I'm not saying every kid outgrows certain things, but I mean, even Buddy and Tony, when they were little, there were things they wouldn't eat. Or just, you know, Buddy wouldn't eat meat when he was little. And uh, Tony, I, I can't really remember if there was any specifics that he didn't really like. I can't remember. But I know Buddy didn't like meat. Um, but, the, you know, kids outgrow. They outgrow that kind of stuff. Most kids do. Levi has not outgrown looking at something and deciding he's not going to like it or looking at something and deciding he's not even going to try it. Um, so to know that I basically had to force him to take a bite of one at Taco Bell and now I'm making them for him at home. That is a thumbs up on my, on my, my end, I think. All right. So I'm going to go and get this out for y'all. I love you guys. God bless y'all. Try these. I don't even think you have to have a quesadilla maker. I could easily have done this in a skillet, warmed up my... I Can y'all see it? What's left? I could have done that in a pot and then used my skillet. I could have had a second skillet, but I don't have a second skillet. Um, but I could have used my skillet for making it more um, soft because in the quesadilla maker, it makes them a little bit crispy. A um, little chewy, crispy, crunchy, depending on what section of the bite you're getting. If you've done it in a skillet, it's probably something, I don't know how Taco Bell makes theirs, but theirs are soft. I would imagine that they're in a hot skillet, maybe with a little oil or butter or something. They put the filling in, they fold over the other piece because it's one big tortilla, so they fold it over and they cook it that way just for a couple of seconds. Um, just enough maybe to brown the edges, but the most of the tortilla is soft. If you've had one from Taco Bell, you know what I'm talking about. They're not crunchy. Um, and there's no, there might be some harder parts around the edge, but most of it is a soft. And this, the quesadilla maker doesn't really do it soft like that. Just sections in the middle are soft, but the most of it's a little bit. Get your tail off that table. <gasps> Jensen is... That must be what he did that day he got my taco. He was on that coffee table where Levi was just got through eating. Levi was through already. And I haven't even sat down to have my squash yet and my mine. But anyway, I'm going to go um, try these. They're really good.